Welcome! Today I want to speak about the movie Blood of Heroes or Salute of the Jugger, as it is also called. Many of you might know uh, Jugger itself, the sport that has been inspired by this movie. And Jugger is quite popular in Germany and Spain with over a hundred teams, but very popular as well in Ireland, in the Americas even, in Australia, uh, in Sweden and in many other countries. But today I want to focus on the film, the movie that, as said, inspired Jagger as a sport. I have written the five first fact books about the sport of Jagger, and for the research of the first book I have spoken with the screenwriter and director David Webb Peoples to get some background information, and that background information I want to share with you now. David did also screenwriting for 12 Monkeys and Blade Runner and Unforgiven and other movies, but uh, Blood of Heroes is, I think, his only film he directed or his other film that he directed. So usually he works as a screenwriter. Just a short summary of Blood of Heroes. The movie is solely about a team of Jugger players, so a group of uh, people who travel through the desert by foot from village to village in a post-apocalyptic setting. The whole film is filmed in the Australian desert and they play against the local villages teams to earn well their living so after the matches when they have won there is a big party and they get food and drink and stuff like that but the sport team gets ambitions you could say they want to challenge the red city teams and this dubious red city turns out to be a vault below the desert where elite jugger teams are playing the veteran of this jugger team the film is about he is Cello, played by Rutger Hauer, and um, he gets inspired by Juan Chen, so Kida in the film, who accompanies the Jugger team and who is most ambitious to get down to the Red City. And against his will, she draws the uh, Jugger team to the Red City and to a challenge against those elite teams. The interesting thing about this film is that it is often called a B or even a C movie and it looks cheap and stuff like that people say. But um, the really special thing about it is that Blood of Heroes is only and solely about Jagger sport. As said it takes place in a post-apocalyptic setting but aside from a short text intro on one screen we do not get any background information what has happened to Earth and to human communities. We just see the ragged down villages which are visited by the Jugger teams. We see the Red City, much of low tech and stuff like that. We do not see any type of technology concerning transport. So there is no car, with one exception, which we will address later. Uh, there are no planes. There are also, well, no real weapons display there. Jugger gear is not weapons, that's just gear to play Jugger and nothing else. And it's not used as a weapon in the film either, even uh, in a situation where it w well could have been used as a weapon, but it isn't. So um, the film is really only about the sport, nothing about the background of anything else but this Jugger sport. And that's quite outstanding. Um, aside from that, uh, of course, the film is absolutely unique because it inspired a whole new sport and Jagger sport itself is a fully working uh, tournament sport. It's a lot of fun, it includes outstanding lots of fair play and it has a really own dynamics. It's a unique combination of fencing-like and rugby-like play, so team play and uh, single sport in one really outstanding and that is something that not many films can claim in fact none almost there is rollerball which inspired the current rollerball but well as far as i know that's about it david got inspired for a salute of the jugger by the short story rollerball in the 1970s so not the film rollerball so we have a parallel there, rollerball inspiring the today's rollerball small scene and jugger inspiring the growing jugger community for sports as well. He wrote the script in 1978 and interestingly for the set he bought a book about Nuba knife fighting he said as an inspiration for his actors how they could play jugger because he invented jugger from scratch. There was no example for jugger, he just thought it out completely 
by himself on paper and then thanks to the stunt coordinator Guy Norris and the other actors Jagger has been created on screen sort of from scratch as well. So Jagger is really completely a new inspiration of David Webb people himself. Why he did create a sport like Jagger? Well, when he re uh, read Rollerball, he said he didn't like the corporate aspect, the, the big companies in the background and stuff like that, and all the politics behind it, and the star aspect with cheering fans and stuff like that. No, he wanted some kind of traveling musicians in the sport uh, segment with a very physical sport. About the sport itself, he said, quote, I wanted the game to be very physical. I definitely didn't want it to be martial arts. Martial arts always look balletic and graceful. I very much wanted this a game of courage and endurance rather than a game entirely of skill. Later on though, interestingly, we get sort of big corporations, we get sort of, well, popularity of politics. When they get down into the Red City War, to the elite teams, they both play in a league, this Red City League, and we have something like an analogy for companies by the aristocratic uh, structure down there. So the aristocrats are supporting the games, they are financing the games, they are having their stars down there, stuff like that. So that reminds a bit of rollerball there and of big companies and stuff. But only there, and even there, we do not get background information about those aristocrats or which political games they play with the players, aside from a personal problem one of them has with Cello, the main veteran character in the film, which leads to Cello going back into the desert in the end. Spoiler warning here. The next interesting thing is, what is Jagger actually? Jagger is not a normal term. It doesn't exist or it didn't exist before the Jagger film as a word. It did exist as part of name for a bird, Falco Jagger. And I have no idea where this Jagger in Falco Jagger actually comes from. So that would be very interesting to know. If you have any idea why this bird is called Falco Jagger and why this Jagger nomenclature in Latin has been set, I would be really keen to hear about it. So contact me if you know anything about that. But David Webb Peoples, he considered which name he should give his sport. And he said, well, the word juggernaut is an impressive, powerful sounding word, quote, but I didn't want to use a conventional word used so often. Jugger is kind of short for it. For example, when I worked on Blade Runner, I didn't like the word Android right. So I went to my daughter who was studying chemistry and she came up with the word replicant. And so for Jugger, David Webb Peoples came up with the word Jugger itself instead of Juggernaut or anything else. On the other hand, he had problems with the verb because he did not like the, use, uh, the word jugging itself and it's never mentioned in the film either. So, quote, I never used the word jugging because I never felt quite comfortable with that word, but I never did figure out what the alternative was that he told me when I asked him about that. So, well, we do not have a verb for playing jugger. It's just we're playing jugger or the actors are playing jugger or whatever. There is one other feature in Jagger that's quite unusual and that's the ball the team uses to score a point. There is no ball in Jagger, although there is. Point is, the ball is a dog skull in the movie and in today's Jagger it's an artificial dog skull made of foam and stuff. Quite abstract often that it mostly looks like a football or a rugby ball. But um, in the film, as said, it's a dog skull that has been put on a stake. Today, the ball has to be stuck into sort of a volcano there. So an inverted stake, also quite interesting. When I asked him, David said, well, I didn't like dogs so much, so I took dog skulls because of that. Another side note that is quite interesting about the Jagger film is that the uh, version that came out in Germany, for example, has been heavily edited. Many scenes have been scissored for the brutality. When Duran Chen, when Kida is wrenching around the foot of an opponent player, that has been cut. When she bites off an ear, that has been cut. 
but also stuff that's not that obvious has been cut, like two strange toll collectors arriving in some kind of an old post-apocalyptic tank or hover car or something like that, very strange thing. And they come to the juggers and collect their toll. While the juggers do have heavy gear with them and they easily could defeat those two persons, they don't. They just submit to them and just pay the toll itself. But the strangest thing is that actually the ending has been cut. So if you're viewing the German version or the version of some other countries, you won't get the actual ending. What you get is when Kida looks up to the cheering crowds in the Red City and that's it. If you get the real ending, you will see Sello, so Rutger Hauer, uh, with his patched up eye looking into the fog where an opponent team turns up and they should be quite good and stuff like that. So Sello is back again in the desert with a new Jagger team while Kida, Erdogan Chan, is still in the Red City and gets sort of a Jagger hero or Jagger star there uh, and starts to fight in the Jagger League. Then there's a very interesting information that has been posted in the monthly film bulletin. And there they say that a whole lot of scenes didn't make it even into this uncensored version. Like a young lad that was quite present in the film, he was completely cut out. Also the opening ceremony for the Jagger Games, which was very elaborate as the writer claims, has been removed. And a whole Red City street that was very detailed has also been cut. So that's really a shame. And Nigel Floyd in the monthly film bulletin, he claims that a good budget has been used to make the film look cheap. And that's quite interesting because, um, as said, the whole Jugger film focuses only on the sports of Jugger. And yes, you might consider it being a B movie or a cheap movie or something like that. Maybe the uh, director did this just to strengthen the focus on the sport instead of any other film stuff out there. And interestingly, if you compare the movie Blood of Heroes, Salute of the Jagger to others like Matrix, for example, you indeed have a lot of brutality in Blood of Heroes. Legs get broken, eyes get slashed out, and ears get bitten off, and one so quite brutal there. But on the other hand, the aesthetics of brutality is quite different than the aesthetics of brutality, for example, in popular Matrix or other movies. In Matrix, for example, I think brutality is idolized. Brutality looks good, they look cool. The people they shoot, they don't matter. Simple soldiers who don't stand a chance get just shot. So it's just, it is stylized brutality that's cool. In the Jagger film, brutality has consequences. Cello gets his eye gouged out by a chain hit and uh, he gets his eye patched up and soon closed by his companion. The one quick, for example, gets his leg broken and he's left in the desert. We don't know what happens to him. He will probably die. So brutality is not idolized. It's not nice. It doesn't look cool. It's just brutality. And that is a good point, I think. So I hope you liked this little overview over the Jugger film background. Feel free to visit my Uhu's Jugger tutorial series, how to play Jugger, how to get started with playing the sport of Jugger for real. Also be welcome to support my work on Patreon, link below. And well, maybe we meet on the field one day. Thank you very much and bye.